previous video, I showed the construction of this wall. After we had dismantled the last one. If you remember, I wanted to get rid of this cluttered mess where I had been using the find a pig approach for putting my tools away. I wanted to be able to find exactly where my tools were every time I went to grab them, while also being able to put the tools away quickly as I knew where they were supposed to go. In this video, I want to address the second problem I had with my previous wall, and that is storing items that pegboards aren't meant to hang. I had pegboard shelves that were caked in layers of dust and items seemed to fall off without provocation. In this video, I wanted to be able to add depth to my wall, creating more space for my tools, as well as better organization for items I would more often use on my workbench. This was my idea. By carefully cutting into my creation, I could install an in-wall cabinet. The walls of my pole barn are around 8 inches thick, so adding 3 to 4 inches didn't seem to be much of a problem. Here we are, assembling the box that will later be the cabinet. If you're interested in this box joint setup where I can easily stack numerous boards, thus making the task simpler, I have a link at the end. Instead of running 4 boards through 8 passes, I can achieve the same in only 2. Now, before I cut into the wall, I really wanted to make sure that the box I was inserting would match the carefully drawn lines I had already placed on the wall. Building the box first made a perfect pattern to double check my lines. That's important because obviously with the natural board patterns, repairing any mistakes would make my error stand out and not follow the natural look of the wall. Believe me. These cuts were very difficult, and I had honestly questioned myself as to whether or not I really wanted this cabinet. I fastened a makeshift laser pointer on the front, as you can see, to give me a little peace of mind. Although looking back, I didn't use it as much as I thought I would. Nevertheless, it came out exactly as I wanted it to, and the box fit perfectly. I created a rabbit joint on the back of my cabinet for a piece of panel backing and borrowed the butcher's chisel to clean up what my router left behind. What I'm doing here might not be so obvious. In order to attach my cabinets to the wall, I needed a surface to attach it to. Behind my new cabinet was just insulation while the only thing I had on the sides was drywall. Adding these boards was crucial in that it gave it a surface to adhere to. My faithful son is adding a couple coats of water-based polyurethane and finishing the back of this because we'll be adding magnet tool holders and due to the thin wall of the plywood backing, we'll need to use bolts to attach it instead of screws.
maybe you're wondering why I didn't just use glue, but I figured if I ever had any problems, removing the cabinet would be easier with nails. Afterwards, and something I didn't record, I added caulking to prevent drafts from coming through the cracks. The doors to my cabinet were another nail biter and had to be cut perfectly to keep everything square. Afterwards, I had to plane off about 3 16th of an inch so I could add a piece of plywood backing. This was necessary as the boards on their own were fragile and would easily crack in time as well as warp. By adding a backer made of plywood paneling, I gave it stability and strength. Because I made sure there was an overhang when I glued the backing, I flush cut that off with the router. Now let's look at the original plan. This is what I had planned. But then I decided in the future I'd love to have the workbench below except bench dogs. Adding a second cabinet could be dedicated just for those tools and would be convenient next to my chisel cabinet. Because it is entirely the same as the other, I won't be showing that construction. I could have put some cheap broad butt hinges on and it might have been okay, but I chose to use these piano hinges for two reasons. Due to the natural way that the 1x4s warp, besides just the plywood backers, I felt like I would need the continuous length of steel to keep the doors straight. The second reason, and maybe the more important reason, is that I plan on putting objects on the doors that will have weight and felt like the strength of a piano hinge would be necessary. I used my marking gauge and ran a line through the absolute center of the edge of the board and then traced a pencil through it. I used my hinge as a pattern and marked the cross marks so I could drill my holes. I carved out a groove for a piece of L bracket on the opposite side of my door. I did this once again to ensure that my door will stay straight in time and not warp. Measuring the middle of the width of my door edge, I copied that same width to my wall which allowed me to know exactly where to drill my holes for the opposite side of the piano hinge. As these doors are all the same, I'm only showing the install for the first one, but each door was done in the exact way with excellent results. one more brick to throw at this wall in the third of the series and I feel like the way I'm going to approach tool placement in that video will be something that has not been tried before so stay tuned and thank you so much for watching